a very good evening uh, to you all dear brothers uh, and in christ uh, we thank our lord and savior jesus christ for giving it an opportunity to share his wonderful words of life uh, so dear brothers and sisters uh, so as we all studied a few years a few days before that the uh, human soul dies and man himself is a soul and he doesn't have soul so if a uh, soul dies then what goes to hell uh, or heaven so that uh, has to be very clarified so today we'll take a, a very important uh, this is subject uh, called as hell so we'll go for a tour of hell and see what the bible says about hell so generally the thought about hell is that hell is a place of torment uh, you see where all the wicked go and uh, they are put into the lake of fire and tortured slowly they burnt you see day and night they are tortured they burnt you see in brimstone and fire and there is no relief even after they are screaming crying to god for help there is no mercy that is shown to them and there are also the worms in hell you see the worms never die and the fire is never quenched so in hell there are actually different categories and different department uh, you see uh, different sections to give punishment for the sinners based upon the sins which they committed uh, on this earth you see some people are put into you see boiling uh, uh, water or boiling oil and deep fried you see some people are put into hot water very very hot uh, you see and uh, they are dipped and fried uh, and uh, even after in spite of uh, crying and weeping uh, you see they are not uh, freed and uh, eyes are plucked for some people who are sinned with their eyes you see and uh, those people who are told lies and uh, you see backbiten their teeth will be plucked their tongues are uh, you see plucked out when some people the skins are peeled uh, they are put into hard labor you see where there are uh, you see uh made to work uh, very heavily without any rest and some people are put into you see poisonous uh, snakes and uh, various types of uh, poisonous reptiles uh, like scorpions uh, they are allowed to bait them so this is the idea of a tell the sinners who never accept a jesus as a savior will go to hell and hell is a prison and uh, jesus uh, daily visits hell uh, you see to take account of what all has happened in hell uh, you see how many souls came in today so many souls had tortured and what is the result of it and uh, daily account is taken by uh, jesus it seems so who is the in charge of hell if you see you see the devil himself is the great uh, you see emperor uh, is a great ruler is uh, a great in charge of that hell uh, you see and uh, god himself uh, has given that uh, in charge to the devil so his duty is to go to the uh, world and pick up all the dead souls uh, and bring them to judgment before christ uh, you see and christ uh, opens the book of life and judges every man according to his deeds so whosoever has sinned uh, as per the book of life they will be judged they will be put to hell fire and which soever souls have lived a holy life they will go to paradise you see and to live with christ you see so this judgment of you see will happen when everybody will stand in the queue the books of life will be opened you see uh, uh, the sinners will go to hell and the saints will go to you see heaven so uh, and daily it is the duty of the devil the satan to come and give account to god see this idea is god from the scriptures uh, that is mentioned in book of job all the angels came to give account to god so similarly satan also came to god to give account you see and uh, let us see that verse uh, that is given to us in book of uh, job first chapter verse 6 and 7 uh emmanuel brother can you read job uh, first chapter 6 and 7 brother it job for chapter 6 and 7 now there was a day when the sons of god came to present themselves before the lord 
and the Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comes thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Very good, Buddha. So here we see clearly, uh, you see the conversation between God and the angels. Uh, you see, and uh, when all the angels uh, came to submit to God, you see, dear Buddha, and that time, uh, you see, who also came with him, sir? Uh, Satan also came with him, sir. And the Lord asked Satan, you see, where are you coming from? And he really clearly said that uh, I am coming uh, from going to and fro all through the earth, it seems, sir. So, here we see that as all the angels are giving account to God, you see, so similarly, Satan is also coming and giving account to God about what all things is done on earth. So, dear brethren, so based on these scriptures, uh, you see, many people think that uh, it is the Satan's responsibility to bring all the souls to uh, be punished in hell because they committed sin against God. Okay, if... Uh, this is true that all the sinners go to hell and uh, all the holy people go to heaven. Who is the greatest of all the sinners? Uh, you see, it is uh, the devil himself, Satan himself. Uh, so forget about uh, Satan torturing all the souls, the wicked souls. First of all, he himself should be tortured. He himself should be put to, you see, hellfire because he is the root and cause of uh, sin. He is the master, he is the devil, he is the father of lies. But uh, we never see that, uh, you see that Satan is uh, uh, put into hell and he is tortured, you see. And moreover, you see, punishing a man uh, eternally, forever and ever, uh, without uh, any number of years, infinite number of years, for the sins uh, they have committed on uh, this earth, uh, for a short uh, span of period, uh, is it uh, really, you see, make justice? Does it really make justice? Does it really, you see, uh, justified before God? Who is the God, just God? Imagine, you see, how much can a man sin? Uh, let us uh, just think it over and see. See, a man can sin only from uh, the period of uh, life to death. You see, only the, during that period, he can commit sin against God. Imagine a man, if he is going to live for 100 years, let us assume and let us see and calculate how many years can he sin against God. Okay? Let us imagine if a man is living for 100 years. Okay? That's uh, more than what we expected. Today, lifespan is not more than, uh, you see, 60, 70. You see, 100 years and all is beyond our imagination. So, let us assume that each and every man in this world stays for 100 years. Okay? That means, in one day, there are 24 hours so in 24 hours, 8 hours, uh, man takes to sleep and 8 hours, uh, he goes for work. So it is balanced 8 hours that uh, man uh, which he dedicates himself for sin. So let us assume, you see, man is having completely 8 hours only for committing sin. Okay, though it is not the practical situation, you see, because uh, all the other things, uh, eating, uh, you see, uh, bathing himself, getting himself ready, all the household activities, all those things has to be done in eight hours. So let us assume he doesn't have any other work. He just goes to work and come and he sleeps and remaining eight hours he commits sin. That means two-third of his, uh, one-third of his life he commits sin. So one-third of his life means what? 34% of his life if he commits sin. In 100 years, that means 34 years he has committed sin. Okay. For 34 years of sin, you know, how much uh, years should God actually punish him? He should be really for 34 years or 35 years, not more than that. Uh, but uh, how wise and how correct and how just is it for God to punish a man who has committed sin only for just a short span of period? You see, continuously, eternity to eternity, without any giving forgiveness. Uh, is it, uh, you see, correct? Uh, does it really uh, make uh, any good uh, uh, sense about God's justice, dear brethren? We all know about uh, so many incidents that has happened in uh, the all over the world. See, once uh, the Sabarmati Express at Godra caught fire. You see, one bogey full of people were burned alive. You know, there was uh, fire all around. 
within few minutes uh, the fire angles angled the, the coach completely and uh, fire uh, fire 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 the people try to escape the try to go on the upper berth uh, there also fire is there the whole uh, bogey is made of iron the iron got so heated you see wherever they go they went to the toilet they went in under the seat wherever they went uh, it was only fire and within few minutes they would run all the people be burnt. We can see some of the images here. Dear brethren, seeing these images, uh, what do we feel? Uh, you see, we never feel satisfied because the unbelievers are good. They died very good. Let them die. Let them suffer. No. Dear brethren, you see, once uh, as fire broke out at a Kumbakorn uh, school, the kids were eating food. You see, the roof, uh, you see, uh, fell upon them and uh, small, small children, you see, they were, they were half burnt. They, some people died, but some people were alive. The children were crying, crying, crying so much. You see, the hospital was full, echoing with, uh, you see, the weeping and the crying of the parents. So, yo, doctor, please help my son. Please help me. What can a doctor do? If they touch the skin, it so becomes so soft. Uh, not even injection can be given to the brain. You see, and the children are crying in pain. Oh, mommy, please save me. Daddy, please help. Oh, doctor, please help. Dear brethren, you see, seeing that pathetic condition, you know, they were just, uh, you see, burned only for a few minutes. Uh, not even five to ten minutes, but only just a few minutes. Uh, you see, the scene, you see, it's very difficult to see. Then, dear Budren, we as sinners, you see, can't uh, see these things, or not able to bear these things. Uh. And how about the just God, the loving God, who loved the world so much uh, that he gave his only begotten son to save us, can make a hell for all the universe of this world, dear brethren, you know, Hitler killed 60 lakh Jews systematically. He slaughtered 60 lakh Jews without mercy. He burned them alive. Each and every body was post-mortem. Each and every skeleton, each and every body skeleton, dear brethren, was stored separately. You see, the Germans manufactured leather items from the skin. All the carpets were manufactured by the hairs. Uh, see, the world, uh, looking back, never appreciates uh, Hitler. And how can we appreciate a God who has created a hell for the entire mankind? You see, Saddam Hussein, who burnt uh, many cities, many villages, who killed the entire villages uh, when he was caught. What was the punishment that was given to him? Dear brother? Hang him till death. He was not taken to the torture room. Neither his uh, skin were peeled, neither his eyes were plucked. One by one, his nails were torn out. No, a simply hang to death. Dear brethren, Jesus just going to hell day by day, taking grounds, the people crying for mercy. Jesus simply says, My son, once you had a good time, now it's a bad time for you. Once they had bad time, now it's a good time for them. And Jesus just replies and just walks off. Do you think uh, it's really the character of Jesus? That is against what uh, the Bible says about Jesus. Somebody calls Jesus' feet. Uh, Jesus never walked away like that. Jesus helped them. Though they believed them or not. Dear brethren, then this character seems to be very awkward and uh, and what the heathens believe that our God is a ferocious God, an angry God who always wants to devour the sinners. Dear brethren, if he wanted to devour the sinners, why did he give his son? He would have done it uh, the first day itself. Uh, dear brethren, imagine if a dog bites us. You see, there are a lot of street dogs in the road, no? If his dog bites us, what will we do? 
will we get on and uh, catch hold of the dog run behind it and catch hold of the dog and pull it you see bring it uh, and uh, beat it nicely and uh, do we roast it do we put it into a hot water dip it feel his skin feel his nails uh, pluck out his tongue pluck out his eyes uh, and make it into pieces small small pieces no dip then being evil wicked we won't do it uh, we will be satisfied only to punish it uh, you see until uh, our anger is quenched uh, we won't uh, you see uh, punish them eternally you see imagine if somebody comes to repair a computer or system anything in our house it gets spoiled uh, do we really hang him to death and uh, peel his skin you see torture him you see don't you brethren then how you see the bible uh, says that god punished the wicked yes of course god punished the wicked with the fire you see and so many people they misunderstand that god similarly is the hell fire but before coming to a conclusion we need to read these verses dear brethren see of course god consumed the wicked with fire but what did he do with them after that one what did he do with the wicked let us read what the bible says numbers 1633 uh sajib brother can you read number 1633 one second brother okay in malayalam or english ah in english kjv you read only in kjv until i tell you to read in nav or malayali they and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit and the earth closed upon them and they perished from among the congregation you see they went alive into the pit you see the fire quenched them you see and what does the bible say did they go down deep into hell did they go and burn there forever and ever no the verse clearly says uh, you see the earth closed and they perished from the congregation perished means perished dear brethren they did not live in the congregation they're gone forever the god destroyed the entire city of sodom and gomorrah because of sin against god what happened to the people the people became salt that is today's dead sea You see, none not alive. God did never take the sinners alive and to some deep city to punish them forever and ever. They were no. In front of their eyes, a fire came from heaven, brimstone and rain, and destroyed the entire city. You know, special thing about the Bible is that Bible says uh, that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah will away again have salvation. they will come back in the resurrection to the same state that's what the bible says let us read ezekiel 1655 stephen brother can you read ezekiel 1655 one minute brother ezekiel 1655 yeah Ezekiel 1655 Ah uh, read brother Yes When thy sisters Sodom and her daughters shall return to the former state and samaria and her daughter shall return to their former state then thou and thy daughters shall return to your former state see the bible clearly says that the sodom shall be returned restored to the former state she shall return to the former state even israel shall be restored it seems that means 
If Sodom itself shall be saved, if Israel itself shall be saved, who crucified Christ? Then dear brethren, where is the question of the wicked going to hell? You see, once uh, the disciples of Jesus went to a village uh, asking for food. You know, the village people never uh, give them food. They cast them out. You see, don't ever come to our city. You see, please get out. And they complained, uh, they came and complained to Jesus saying, Master, please give us the permission that we may call fire from heaven and destroy them. You know, what did Jesus reply for that one, dear brethren? You see, let us read that one in Luke 9, 54 and 55. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, can you read Luke 9, 54 and 55? Luke 9, 54 and 55. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, will thou that our command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. Continue. Hmm. For the Son of Man is not to come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Very good, brother. See? Here, clearly, Jesus could have told, yes, you're absolutely right. That's what I also made a place next to heaven. Beautiful illness there where I'll torture them. Now begin this torture here only. Did Jesus say that one? No. You know not what type of spirit you are. Jesus scolded them and said, you see, son of man never came to destroy lives. He came to save the lives of human beings, not to destroy them, dear brethren. That is the spirit of Christ. You see, therefore, what does the Bible say about hell? You see, the word hell actually comes in the Bible. You know, the word hell, the meaning of the word hell, you know, what is the original meaning of the word hell? It is to hide. You see, to conceal, to cover. That is the original meaning of the word hell. You see, like for example, now what do you see see in the screen? What is this one called as? What is that you can see in the screen? Can somebody tell me? Window. Very good. That's a window. Correct. Absolutely window. And what is this one? Windows. Windows. So window and windows. So plural, singular. Huh? <laughs> so both has got a lot of difference. One is that we put to the house and other is that we use it in a computer software. So, see, both the words are same. Application is different. Similarly, the word hell, the application is changed compared to virtually what it was used when Bible was written. Now, what is this one? Who can answer? Sajji Buddha, what is this one? Mouse. What about this one? Mouse. Mouse. <laughs> so both are mouse. See, both stays in house only. <laughs> so you see the meaning has changed here, brethren. So what is this one? Stephen Brother, what is this one? Tablets. Capsules. Medicines. These are also tablets. <laughs> see, the application has changed. Similarly, originally, you know, the Bible hell actually means to bury, to hide, to conceal. In world and English, whenever they used to use the word hide, instead of that word hide, they used to use that word hell. I must go to bury my potatoes. And they used to tell in those days, like, I must go and, you see, hell my potatoes. Hell my potatoes is what? You see, bury deep inside the ground. You see, this one, you see, you can see the screen. It's a 15th century Cambridge dictionary. You see? So, here you can see in the 15th century dictionary, I have physical copy in my house. If anybody comes to my house, you can see it. It's a original 15th century uh, dictionary, Cambridge dictionary. It's not a published one, reprinted or something. Original Bible, 15th century, old, oldest dictionary. You see, there it clearly is given what is the meaning of the word uh, hell. You see, can somebody read, Buddha? Can somebody read from the screen? What is written there? Hell, to hide, 
And when coming to the New Testament, there are three Greek words that are used to translate the word hell. First, it is Hades. Second, it is Gehenna. And third, it is Tartaro. Now, today, we're going to see in very shortly how these words are used in the Bible. Okay? Now, the word, uh, you see, Sheol, huh? that is uh, uh, in the... Uh, you see, uh, Old Testament, this word Sheol comes, you know, 63 times in the Bible. You see, in Old Testament, 63 times it comes. But, you know, that uh, word is not translated in all the places as hell. Some places it is translated as grave. Some places it is translated as hell. And still in some places, it is translated as pit. Now, dear brother, imagine if uh, this word Sheol, which is translated as hell, if it is really a place of torment, then in all the places, it should be translated as uh, hellfire, 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 hellfire. But it is not done so. It is not at all done so. Whenever the Bible speaks about good person, you know, the translators have translated this word as grave or pit. Whenever it is, this verse is speaking about a bad person, they have translated the word hell. So that, you know, why they have done it? Because the reader you may get the understanding that hell is a place of torment. You see, and uh, good people go to grave you see, why, why this difference? Sir? If it is really hell, the hellfire, then every place you would translate the same. Now, why? Why this differentiation is done? And moreover, in the Old Testament, the word hell comes, but never, not even in one place, that word hell is associated with fire. It comes only hell. There's no hellfire is used in the Bible, in the Old Testament at all. It appears only in the New Testament. That to 12 times, I'll tell you shortly. Okay? So, please everybody stay till the end of the class. Any doubts, any questions you have, you can definitely ask. We are free to discuss. Okay? So, yeah. Why this word is used only like this one? We'll see an example. Okay? Why hellfire is not used? They could have used it, no? Anyway, hell, that's the imagination. Hell is a place of fire. Hellfire is there in New Testament. But use the same word in uh, Old Testament. Why? You see, let us see an example. First time the word hell, that means Sheol, comes in the Bible in Genesis 37-35. This is actually speaking about, uh, you see, uh, Jacob uh, hearing that his son, uh, you see, uh, uh, is dead. Uh, so that Joseph is dead. His brothers came and told a lie that Joseph is dead. And Jacob could not control his emotion. He told, I will go down to the grave. I will go down to the grave where my son is. You see, let us, before studying that one, let us read what is the meaning of uh, Sheol in the, you see, uh, uh, Hebrew dictionary. Can somebody read what is there in the pink box, brother? Can somebody read who can read in English? Can somebody read what is there in the pink box? Any brethren, please? Sajji brother? Uh, it's part, uh, brother, actually. H7585. 
Can you read? Uh, uh, in five, eight five. Yeah. Sure. Hmm. Uh, from H five H seven five nine two eight or the world of the dead, as if a subterrain retreat, including its accessories and inmates, grave, hell, pit. You see. You know what is grave, comma, hell, comma, pit? That means this Hebrew word Sheol is translated in the Bible in such ways, three different ways. Okay. Now let us read. Please read this verse from uh, Genesis 37 35, brother. Can anybody open your Bible and read it from Genesis 37 35? Please, if somebody can make it really fast, it will be very kind. Yeah, I can read that. Oh, please, sister. Please continue, please. And all his sons. And all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my shorn morning. Thus his father wept for him. You see, Jacob said, I will go down into the grave huh? unto my son. Now here, you can see on the screen, next to the word grave, one small letter is there, H7585. You see, that is the Strong's Hebrew concordance number. This is not put by me. You can search it on the Google itself, the numbers will come right to you. Or you can download this app where you can find the Greek and Hebrew words in your mobile itself. You see, uh, Sword Bible is there, Sword Bible is there. And if you click any verse, Immediately that Hebrew and Greek word will pop up. Just to put your finger near it, it will show what's the meaning of Hebrew and Greek word. So here, the same word, Sheol, is translated as what? Grave. Because how can a very good person, you see, uh, you see the faith warrior, you see one of the ancient worthies, uh, you see, how can he go to hell? Hence, uh, when it is written about Jacob, they are translated as grave. Because he Jacob is a good person. No, he can't go to hell. Now, now it comes to the same wicked person. How the Hebrew word is translated? Read Psalms 917. Psalms 917. Uh, Sahaja Buddha, can you read in KJV Bible? Shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Ah, uh, once more, brother. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Very good, brother. See again, you see the word hell here. See the same number H seven five eight five, the Greek Hebrew Greek concordance number. The same number is coming. Up. That is actually Sheol. That word, the root word is actually Sheol there. You see, you know, dear Budran, huh? Sheol comes here. The word Sheol. Now here, it is speaking about the wicked people. Clearly, the wicked shall go to hell. How can the wicked uh, go to a grave? They should go to hell or place of torment. Hence, the translators have translated here as what? As hell. Giving a picture that is a place of torment at your brethren. Same Greek Hebrew words, nothing, no difference. If you come to my house, I have got more than 50 translations of Bible in my house. You can see, compare all the Bibles. You see, the same Hebrew and Greek Bible is there. You can come and see. Same words is translated in other place in different way. Why? Because the translators have a preconceived idea. But hell is a place of torment. Hence, all the wicked should go to, you see, a place of torment. You see, now let us read about Job. You see, uh, read Job 17, chapter verse 13 and verse 16. Can uh, Stephen, mother, can you read Job 17, chapter verse 13 and 16, mother? Yes, brother, one minute.
Job 17, 13 to 16. 13 and 16. 13. If I wait, the grave is my house. I have made my bed in the darkness. Mm. See, here the word grave is used. Why? Job is a good person. How can he go to hell? It is the same Hebrew word. Sheol that is translated. You can see here. 7585. Now, okay. Now, read verse 16. How the same Hebrew verse translated here? Read verse 16 verse. They shall go down to the bars of the pit when our rest together is in the dust. Mm, pit. You see, the word pit is used here. You see, they haven't put grave also here. Eh? They haven't put L also. Eh? Cleverly, they put pit. Uh. Okay. Now, let us compare it with in different languages. Okay. Uh, can somebody read uh, in Nepali Psalms 917? Psalms 917, can somebody read in Nepali? And later on, we'll see in Tamil and Malayali also. Stephen, brother, uh, are you comfortable with uh, Tamil? Anybody you can read in Nepal, uh, Nepali? Okay, brother, I will read it. Ah, please. I don't have a Tamil Bible, brother. Sorry. Oh, is it okay? Okay, then. You can download. Is it possible for you to see online? Is it okay? Are you comfortable? Okay, Imani Buddha, please read. In Nepali. Dusta or say Patal may for Kira Jansan, Janison. So we jati a root just like permission like Wilson son. Where they will go? What does it come in Nepali? Patal. Patalam. Patal. Ah, Patal. Very good, brother. Okay. Uh, now, what does Job 17 13 come, brother? In Nepali, brother. Ah, Nepali. Hmm. Job 17, 13. Hmm. Mm, it's written as 13. Yeah. Edi Mule Asa Goriko Gorchi Hanu, buddy. Edi Mule Miro Uchan on the Karma Banae Bunny. It's written as Chihan. Chihan. Chihan means what? The grave. Grave. Okay. Now let us read in Malayali. Shaji brother, can you read Psalms 917? Sustan Madam, Devate, Marasuna, Sagala, Yadigalum, Padala Tilechetri. Patina, super with the Pathalam, much similar to Nepali, pleasant to hear Nepal, Malali, Pathalam, good. Okay, Stephen Mother, can you help us with a little bit of Tamil? Can you download? Pathalam means also the same. Pathala, also in Tamil. No, 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 I don't have the Tamil Bible. No, I'm sorry. You, you can't download? Not now. I don't have it here. Okay. No problem. See, why I told you particularly? Because in Tamil, it comes as Naragam. Not Pathalam. You know, in Tamil, it's clearly given that the wicked go to water. Naragam. Huh? You see? And uh, when it comes to Job, it is written as, uh, you see? Huh? Pathalam. Now, Shaji Buddha, read in Malayali, Job 17, 13, Buddha. Huh? Nyano, Padalate, and then Vidai, with his chicken. Yerutin, Nyan, and the Kedaka with his chicken. Okay. See, here also, Pathalam, that word is come. Now, just see. Uh, the same word, how is this translated? Uh, one in grave, other in pit, other in hell. Okay. Now, dear brethren, you see, this uh, clearly shows uh, the you see variety of translation that is done. You see? So, we'll just uh, recollect what you have seen. See, all the three verses, what you studied, it is the same Hebrew word, sheol. Okay? Now, in English, we clearly saw it's three different words that are used. Same root word, Hebrew, but stands it as grave, hell, you see, and pitta. When it comes to good people, you see, grave, 
is used. But when it comes to bad people, what is the word that is used? Pataram. You see, Naragam. You see, or hell. You see, dear brethren. So, what do you mean by Pataram? You see, what do you mean by hell? If you see, you see, the grave itself uh, is uh, the hell actually in the Bible. You see, in Tamil or in Malayali also or in Nepali also, that word is clearly pronounced. Pathalam. Pathalam means what? That can be split. Huh? Pa and stalam. Pa stalam. If you join together, it will become pa stalam. Pa talam. Pa means what? Pa means actually foot. You see? Huh? Stalam means what? Place. A place which is below the foot. Pa stalam. Something which is below your foot. Now what is below our foot? The ground that is below our foot. You see, below that one, that place itself is called as the, you see, pathalam. So, once the dead are dead, where do we bury them? Where do we bury in here? We bury in below ground only, no? That is the actual meaning of the word. You see, sheol, grave in the Bible. Now, See, let us uh, compare it in New Testament and see. It's more clear. See, like for example, in New Testament, there are three words that are used. Hades, Gehenna and Tartar. See, Hades comes only 11 times. Okay? And Gehenna comes only 12 times. And Tartar comes only one time. First, let us see Hades. It's very simple. What all verse that comes in Sheol is the same as Hades in the, you see, uh, New Testament. Okay, same, uh, uh, this one. We will see a comparison of few verses. Uh, Old Testament, Sheol is New Testament. It is. Both are similar. Okay. Very simply, we will read only one verse. Acts 2.37. First read Acts 2.37 from uh, KJV Bible, then from NAV Bible, then from Nepali, and then from Malayali. Okay. Can anybody read from English KJV Bible first? Acts 2.27. Emmanuel brother, can you read? Can okay, I read Acts 2.27? Hmm. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corpse. Very good. So this is speaking about Jesus. Jesus was never left in hell. Jesus' soul was never left in hell. Okay? Good. Hell, that word hell. If you see the word hell, it is actually from G86. That is Hades. The Greek word used here is Hades. Okay. Okay? Now let us read the same verse in NAV. Sajji uh, you I hope you have NAV. Can you read in NAV? And a little bit louder. I think you're quite far from your mic. It's a little bit very slow. One second, eh? Hmm. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, you will not let your holy one see decay. Now, what did the word come, brother? Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. Ah, realm of the dead. Absolutely correct, brother. The realm of the dead, the place of the dead. Any footnote is given, brother, in any way? Mm. No, oh, brother, actually, I have to search. Okay. Is not printed in your Bible? And I, uh, footnote is not there. Okay, good. No problem. Now, can you read the same verse in Malayali? Very good. See, Pathalam. Correct. Huh? Now, in Nepali, can somebody read in Nepali? Sister, can you read in Nepal, sister? Samiksha, sister. Yes. 
the same verse x yeah. 27 yeah yeah x mine is dvs uh, okay kina bane tapai le mero pran lai or do look ma chonu ne china not a tapai le afna pavitra jan lai sar nane dino ne sa very good ado look ma ado look very good sir okay now this word you know it is actually a copy of the verse that is mentioned in the old testament where is it given in the Old Testament, it is given in Psalm 16.10. Now, let us compare this one from uh, Psalm 16.10 and read. Again, let us read from English, KJV, NIV, Malayali, and as well as Nepal. Okay. Uh, Imagine, brother, can you read Psalm 16.10 from KJV? Yes, Psalm 16.10. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Very good. Uh, see, the same word hell is mentioned in Old Testament. You know, that is the same it is. It's the same Greek and eh? Sheol. So both are one and same. So here yeah, in KJV, everybody is translated as same hell, hell, hell. Okay. Now, let us read in NAV. Sahaji Buddha, can you read in NAV Psalm 16.10? Uh, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. Okay, same way it is translated, the realm of the dead. Any footnote is given there, brother, in Old Testament? Um, no, brother. Okay, no, good. Okay, now let us read in uh, Malayali. Brother, can you read in Malayali? Very good. Pathalam. See, the same word in the Old Testament as a matter Pathalam. Okay. In New Testament, also, same Pathalam. Malayal. Okay. Now, Nepali. Sister, can you read in Nepali, sister? Yes. Kiravane tapali mira pran lai, ato lok match, one on each hina, nata tapali afno, pavitra zan lai, sarna dinonesa. Ah, see, you see, same way it is translated. Now you only think, huh? Is El Adoloka? Huh? Is El Patalama? Is El Greva? And that means it can be translated whichever way you want. Huh? You tell me, if it is really a place of torment, then everywhere it should be the same. No? Why do you translate it? You see, this clearly proves that when Jesus. This verse is speaking about Jesus. How can Jesus be in a place of torment? Hence, uh, in this uh, verses, they are put uh, as various uh, different ways. Uh, but uh, if it comes to uh, the wicked people, again, uh, you see the words uh, are differently used. Okay. Now let us read one more verse, Matthew 16, 18. Uh, Stephen, brother, can you read in English, brother? Matthew 16, 18. Matthew 16. Yes. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. What, brother? What word came there, brother? And the gates of Hades, Hades will not prevail Hades. against it. Which version is that, brother? Which version is the Bible? Um, 18. Which version? What is the name oh, okay. of the Bible? Okay, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. I'll have to go to the KJ, KJV. No, no, no. I asked which version of the no, Bible the did Berivian, you read? The Berivian. I don't know. It goes uh, jumping around. Can okay. I use the KJV now? 
No, it's okay. No problem. You can read it. But I asked you a question. Which was the version you used to read now? Bereavian. Bereavian Bible study. Ah, see, that's one of the translation. Now you read from directly from the Hebrew word. Hades is used there. Now read from KJV, brother. Hmm. Yeah, King James. Hmm. You come into that. Hmm. Matthew 16. 50? 18. 18, is it? Yeah. Sorry. 15? Brother, 16, 18, brother. 18, huh? Yeah. Yes. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. See, here yeah, the word hell, that means Hades is translated as hell. Okay, now Sayji Buddha, can you read from NAV and Malayali? And I tell you that you are Peter. Stand on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of the hate will not overcome it. Very good. That's an NAV? Hi, it's an NAV, brother. Good, brother. Good. See, again, the word Hades is used there. Okay, now can I read in Malayali, brother? Very good. Again, Patalakum. Okay. Can you read in Nepali? Uh, Emmanuel brother or Samiksha sister. Can you read in Nepali? Yes, brother. Any more pani timi lai bandasu timi potrus ho. Yes, certain ma team after Monday. Now, and in Naraka, Hoka, yes, Mathi, Bize, Hune, China. Ah, see, here the word Naraka is used, correct now. Now, why particularly Naraka is used? Because here the verse says that the church is not going to hell. You see, hell has no power over the church. This is true, no? As per their belief, because they believe that hell is a place of torment, the church can never go to hell. You see, so here, instead of putting Ado Lokam, or uh, Pathalam in Nepali, what they put? Dargam, isn't it? Because this is very suitable to their idea, Devadran. So, Devadran, there are many more verses. You see, huh? we will send a PDF notes. You just uh, please uh, go through the, all the other verses. Okay? So, in all these verses, uh, it clearly shows us, uh, you see, that uh, hell is not a place of torment. Okay? Now let us read one more verse, Revelation 1.18. Can somebody read in English? Emmanuel Buddha, can you read in English? Revelation 1.18. Hmm. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive for evermore. I am in, and have the keys of hell and out of death. Uh, and of Jesus, thank you, Buddha. So Jesus is having the keys of hell and death. Based on this person, suddenly some people think that Jesus is the, you see, main person who is having the key and given the in charge to the devil. Okay. Now here, again, it is the same, you see, words that are used, you see, uh, Hades, uh, you see. What does it mean? Uh? You see, hell means what? Uh? You see, we just now saw hell means what? Uh? Hell means grave. So Jesus is having the keys of grave, and keys of death means what? Key is something uh, used to unlock that is which is locked. So Jesus when he returns at the second coming is going to bind the Satan and he is going to use these two keys to unlock first the death. You see? Now what is the meaning of death? Huh? Death means uh, the last moment where we leave a breath. Is that death in the Bible? No. 
That is not the meaning of death as per the Bible. As per the Bible, death means from the moment you're born till the moment you're dead, actually dead. That is a death in the Bible. So when Jesus is going to return, he is going to stop this death process when at his second advent. You see, he is going to stop all the people from dying because he has returned and given them salvation. You see, this is the first key. And the second key is going to use for the hell or Hades or Sheol or grave. That means many people are already dead and gone into the grave. You see, those people will be resurrected from the grave. That's what Jesus said, no? John 5.28, what did Jesus say? Marvel not at this. All that are in the graves shall hear forth his voice and come. Read John 5.28. Can somebody read John 5.28? Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. See, all that are in grave, that is the same word, Hades. All that are in Hades, hell, shall hear his voice and come forth in the resurrection. This is the second key that Jesus is going to use at the second advent. Okay. Now, dear brethren, uh, one more verse. Let us read Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. Uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, can you read Revelation 20, verse 14? Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. Hmm. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now here, just uh, think, uh, what was cast into the lake of fire? What was cast into the lake of fire? Two things were cast. What were Death they? and hell. Very good, brother. Death and hell. See, generally the concept is that, you see, in hell, there is a lake of fire. Correct now? What is there in hell? There is a lake of fire, different, different sections for torture is there. Correct now? But this verse says, hell itself was put into the lake of fire. Now, where is the lake of fire? What is the meaning of this one? No need to break our head at all. The verse itself gives us the answer. What does the verse say? What is the meaning of this lake of fire? Read again, brother. Let us see. Revelation 20, verse 14. Everybody please concentrate. Uh. And, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. This is the second death, not the place of torment. So what is the second death? We have a separate class for it. We will study. In short, all the people dead in Adam will be brought back to life. But if they sin again, they will die again. That is called as a simple statement for second death in the Bible. You see? So, this itself is the second death. Uh, okay? Now, you see, we have studied one Hebrew word, one Greek word. Now, let us study a very important, uh, you see, uh, Greek word that is Gehenna. This word Gehenna actually means the value of phenom. And this word Gehenna comes only 12 times in the Bible. And wherever this word comes, Gehenna, it is accompanied by the word fire. You see, like hell, not only hell comes, but along with hell, the word fire, fire is attached. So it comes hell, fire, hell, fire. It comes only 12 times in the Bible. Now, let us see what the Gehenna means. Can somebody read from the screen in a pink box? Can somebody read? Uh, Shaiji Bidar, can you read? Is it possible? Uh, Gehenna of Hebrew origin H1516 and H2011 Valley of the Son of Hinnom Gehenna or Gehinnom a valley of Jerusalem used figuratively as a name for the place or state of everlasting punishment Hell. Ah, see what does it say? It says it's a valley of Hinnom. You see, the valley of the son of Hinnom, valley of Jerusalem. You see, there was a valley in Jerusalem where the wicked were punished. So that is the name of that valley. You see, Gehenna. Okay, now let us study what this Gehenna means. You see, 
Actually, in Jerusalem, there was a fortress, we know. Okay? And outside the fortress, there was a valley called as Valley of Enom. This place was called as Gehenna. Now, why this place was called as Gehenna? What do you mean by Valley of Enom? If you see, actually, when Israel people sinned against God, when they turned against God, they went and worshipped Baal. We all know Baal God, how it was. It was half human and half animal. It was a, a hollow metallic uh, image, idol. Okay, behind it, they used to put fire and heat that idol as red hot. You see, and upon this red hot uh, idol, which used to have a hand like this, they used to offer human sacrifices to God it seems. Uh, small, small children were burnt alive. Alive, they were thrown into fire. See, pleasing this Baal sacrifice, God. This was, this Baal's temple was outside this place, outside Jerusalem, in Gehenna, in that valley of Enom. You see, uh, so what happened was that we know very well God never liked this uh, worship of Baal. This was forbidden in the Bible. So God severely punished the people of Israel. But when they turned back, God accepted them and told them this Gehenna or the Valley of Enom, the place where Baal God is there, you are never going to use it. We are going to destroy it and treat as a place where you put all the refuse, all the garbage of the city outside Jerusalem. So, this valley was actually the place where all the refuse of the city, all the waste of the city was thrown. Like for example, we today we have you know, a place where all the refuse is to, uh, thrown outside the city. In each and every city is there. You see, all the dustbins, uh, all the waste things are thrown there. This is what Gehenna meant. Okay. Now, let us see what the dictionary says about this Gehenna. Can somebody read from the screen? Who can read from the screen? Emmanuel, are you able to read? Or Samiksha sister, can you read from the screen? Ah. Okay, brother, I would read. Ah, read Gehenna. Gehenna, the valley of Hinnom, near Jerusalem, in which the Israelites sacrificed their children to Moloch, and to which... At a later time, the refuse of the city was conveyed to be slowly burned, hence hell. Mm -hmm. Valley of Enom. See, this is the word hell that is used in the Bible. Now, is there proof in the Bible? Yes. Read Jeremiah 7, chapter verse 30 and 31. Samiksha sister, can you read Jeremiah 7, chapter verse 30 and 31? Can I read from the screen? Yeah, yeah, definitely you can read. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, said the Lord. They have said their abominations in the house which is called by my name to pollute it. They have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded, not there, neither came it into my heart. See, what is the valley of Hinnom? You see, what is the meaning of it? They, they were offering their sons and doctors, daughters as sacrifices to God in fire. This ritual, God had never commanded, nor did this one came into the heart of God, it seems. That means, to putting the wicked, you see, or offering the child sacrifices, this one, God had never commanded. This is the ritual that they are doing in Valley of Enoch. Now read Jeremiah 19, chapter 5 and 6 also, sister. They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire, burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came into my mind. Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that this place shall no more be called the top head, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. Uh -huh. You see, this is the place they were up offering burnt offerings to Baal. You see, a place of top head, valley of Hinnom. God named it as the valley of slaughter. See, God never commanded to offer humans to fire. This one thought never came to God. Imagine, dear brethren, so hence uh, 
when israel people repented this place was treated as a refuse place a garbage place where all the garbage was thrown we say that reference is given in isaiah read isaiah 66:24 uh, emmanuel brother can you read isaiah 66:24 Isaiah 66, 24. Mm. And they shall go forth and look upon the curses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their womb shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be abhorring unto all flesh. Ah, they shall be abhorring unto all flesh. The womb shall not die, the fire shall not be quenched. This was the condition of Gehenna. Now he says, uh, the carcasses of men were thrown here. What do you mean by that one? You see, in Israel, severe culprits were never allowed to be buried. Because they had the faith of resurrection. If burial is there, if the body is there, then only the resurrection will take place. So if the body is not there, you see, they won't come in the resurrection. Hence, uh, the severe after severe criminals, they never wanted them to be buried. Their bodies were thrown in this Gehenna. So, hoping that they would never come in the resurrection also. That means they would be gone forever. It is better that they are gone forever. Now, imagine in such a place, you see, what will be there? Worms will be there. You see, leave some place, worms will be there. Fire will be there. One place, the other place, or such a huge place. Fire or worms will always will be there. You see? That is the meaning of that word Gehenna. Doesn't mean that the fire is still burning even till today. Even the worms are uh, still alive till today. No, dear brethren. You see. So that was actually the background of Gehenna. Now this Gehenna word comes only 12 times in the Bible. See the list of the verses I put here. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Only in James it comes once. Okay. Now you, think, you tell me why this uh, hellfire verse which is a very important doctrine for Christians, comes only 12 times in the Bible. And the two in the Gospels. You see, Matthew, Mark, Luke, all the three, it's a repetition. So, hence we'll consider only one book. Matthew, Mark or Luke. So, it is easy because more elaborately is given in Mark. We'll consider Mark. Okay. Now, think, why Jesus only used these words? Why none of the apostles may never mention about hellfire? Oh, be careful about hellfire or else you'll be gone to hellfire. You'll die. You'll, you shall never be set free. You shall be tortured forever. Why never used it? Think. Dear brethren, now let us read this Mark. 9 chapter verse 43 to 48. Okay. Now who can read in the Bible? English Bible. Can somebody read? Mark 9, chapter 43 to 45, 48. Stephen Brother, Sage Brother, Emmanuel Brother, or Samik Sister. So nobody is prepared. Sage Brother. NIV, NIV is okay. KJV, you read from the KJV, then we'll see the NIV. Mark 9, 43 to 48. Okay, bro. Mark 9. Yeah, 43, 48. Okay. Mm. Yes. And if thine hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that shall never be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched, that, sh that never shall be quenched. Wherefore, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched, and if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Okay. 
Thank for you. everyone. Okay, thank you, brother. Now, Sage okay. brother, read verse 43 and 44 in NIV. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell where the fire never goes out. Hmm. 45 also? You read 43? Uh, yes, sir. Now read verse 44. Um, and if your foot causes you to stumble, cut no, it off. No, no. Read verse 44. No, 44 also completed. Ah, it's not printed, correct, no? Uh, ah, 44 is not printed. 46 is not printed. Why? We'll think. We'll reason at all these things. Okay? See, this is how the translators have translated and printed the Bible. If you have a complete, clear NAV Bible, each and every thing what I tell you, it is mentioned in the footnote itself. Okay, anyway, tomorrow you come to my house, I'll show you all the Bibles. Anyway, good. It's good that we read the comparison of the Bible. See, in all the three places, here the word hellfire comes in the Bible. This is the only place in the entire Bible, hellfire word is used. Now, why such a serious and important doctrine is only used in this place? Now, let us understand this incident. What did Jesus say here? If a hand uh, commits sin, pluck it out. It is better to enter into life with one hand than to go to Gehenna or hellfire with both hands. Okay, that's what the same Jesus says to our legs and even eyes. Okay, now let us... Uh, Practically apply this one and see. Okay? If our hands commit sin, Jesus said it is better to cut off our hands. Now, we are all accepted Jesus as a savior. Correct? No, no doubt about it. Now, do we still commit sin in our hand? Yes or no? Even after accepting Jesus, do we still commit sin? Nobody commits sin in your hand. You're so holy. Everybody, please reply. I want a reply from you to continue the class. Do you all commit sin in your hand or not? Stephen, brother, you're there? Uh, yes, brother. Yes, ah. I do. Thank All you. Right. Please, <laughs> Sorry, over. forgive me. Next time I'll ask each and every individual's name. Uh, Samiksa sister, tell me. Yes, brother. Uh, Saiju brother, please tell me. Yes, brother. Uh, Emmanuel brother, please tell me. Yes, brother. So first we commit. Because yes, we are like a school attendance. Roll number one, roll number two, roll number three. Uh, good. So we all commit sin. Apa. Now we are all obedient children to Christ. So tomorrow itself, let us cut off one hour hand. Because we commit sin from our hand. Okay. Now, if uh, our one hand is cut off, you see, what about the other hand? Will it keep quiet or will it continue to sin? Of course, it won't continue to sin at least for one year. <laughs> but again, after one year, when everything is healed, what will happen? Again, that other hand will commit sin. And if we cut off both the hands, how is it? Uh? Is that what Jesus said? Okay, now both hands are gone. Now, what did Jesus say? If your huh, leg huh, commits sin, cut it off. Okay, now, now imagine Peter, apostle, took a knife, cut off the ear of Malchus to save Jesus. We remember now? You see, what did Jesus say at that time? You see, that was an apt moment for Jesus to tell to Peter, Peter, you sinned. Take a knife and please cut off your hands. Correct now? Did Jesus say that one? No. Did Peter really cut off his hands also? No. Why? If really Jesus ever meant to literally cut off our hands, this was a real and apt situation and the reason for Peter to cut his hands. But Peter never did that one. Neither did our Lord told the disciples to do this one. Dear brethren, we need to think. Then let us see. You see, if our legs commit sin, Jesus said to cut it off. Okay. Now, our 
one leg is gone. Now what about the other leg? Will it keep quiet? No, that will again commit sin. Okay, now we have cut off both uh, legs also. Okay, now what did Jesus say? If your eyes commit sin, pluck it out. You see, so one eye is gone. So only one eye is left over. Now what about the, that other eye? Will it keep quiet? Again, that will also commit sin. You see, then if I cut off uh, both the hands, both the legs and both the eyes, what is left over to serve God, you tell me? Huh? Now this is what Jesus said. Uh, no. Then we should understand what Jesus was actually trying to say because Jesus never literally meant this one, dear brethren. So many sinners came to him. Did Jesus really literally mention these things to do to everybody? No. You see, then what is the meaning of hand, uh, dear brethren? Hand means no what? Uh, you see, our friends, we say, no, oh, he's our right hand, he's my right hand, he's my very close friend. If our friends, if our relatives, if our, uh, you see, Christian friends, let it be, if they are diverting us away from God, leading us to sinful activities, to, you see, to do things which are not pleasing to God, Jesus said, better cut to them. Better cut them off or else you shall go to Kehana. Second death, a place of no return. You shall go and you shall never come back even in the resurrection. You see, Jesus said, if your legs commit sin, legs means what? The place we, we go. Always keep attending marriage, birthday, function, party. Only this one means, where is the importance given for God's? Uh, you see? Huh? You see? Lord's prayer, hearing the Lord's words. If your legs are diverting, cut off all these things. Cut off the places which are going, which are committing you, trying you to sin. Dear brethren, highs means what? The things which you see, continuously seeing mobile. You see, Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, you see, YouTube, huh? TVs, movies, cinema, all these things, always reading newspaper. Dear brethren, it is better that we cut off all these things or else we will go to second death. That's what Jesus meant. First death is the death which you received collectively through Adam. But Jesus gave the ransom. Hence, each and every man has a resurrection. But after accepting Jesus, if you sin willfully, we will go to second death from where there is no return. There is no resurrection at all. We will see about second death in the coming days. Okay. But anyway, but here one problem is that Jesus said the fire is never quenched. The worms die not. So some people think uh, that, oh, hell is a place of torment. Fire will be continuously burning and worms will never die. Actually, Jesus never meant a little statement because cutting off your arms, legs and all is not literal means even this verse is not literal. Now, what is the meaning of this Jesus using the term? This is the same word Jesus quoted from Isaiah 66.24. Remember? We read from Isaiah 66.24. The worms die not. The fire is not quenched. The valley of phenom. You see the carcasses that are put on in the garbage. This is not a literal fire or literal worm. Just keep on burning forever and ever. This was a figurative term. Like for example, imagine a huge building. A hundred floor building is full of fire. You see? What will the fireman do? He will try to quench it. But is it possible to quench it? No, it's not possible. You can't put a water from ground level and completely quench the uh, fire, a towering. You see, you can't quench the tower. In such a time, if you go and ask the fireman, Sir, what happened? Sir, what type of fire is it? Oh, what, 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 uh, when it will get quenched? What will the fireman say? The fireman will say, oh, fire, what type of fire, sir? It is unquenchable fire, sir. It is never quenching at all, sir. That means what? Uh, the fire will burn for thousands of years, millions of years? No. The fire will burn until there is a thing to consume. Once if everything is consumed, dear brethren, no need to do anything. Automatically, the fire will quench off itself. That is what Jesus mentioned. Fire is not quenched, the worm dieth not means until it destroys you completely, until it spoils you completely, you can never escape. That's why Jesus said, try to avoid sin or else you will go to second death and there won't be any resurrection at all. Dear brethren, you see, 
This is what actually Jesus uh, meant in those words. Uh, you see, so Gehenna actually was a figurative way of Jesus explaining that as the people of Israel believed, see, if somebody is put to Gehenna, they can't commit the resurrection. So similarly, if we keep on committing sin after accepting Christ as a Savior, you will be gone forever right, to a place of no return. So Jesus cautioned us to be very careful. You see, okay, now this is about uh, Gehenna. You see, and the last word, you see, that is used uh, to translate word hell in New Testament is Tartaro. That comes only once in the Bible. You know, it is uh, spoken in respect to the angels. That is in 2 Peter 2.4. Can somebody read 2 Peter 2 4? Okay, I'll mention the name. Okay. Uh Samiksa, Samiksa, can you read 2 Peter 2 4? Yes, brother. For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. See, here yeah, the angels are cast down to hell. You see, G5020. That word is actually Tartaro. NIV. Uh, Shaiji Budar, can you read from Ian in your NIV? How does it come? Second Peter 2 4. For if God did not spare angels and the saint, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of Darkness to be held for judgment. Okay, that's NIV. Correct, no, brother? Okay. NIV. Yeah. Stephen, brother, can you read from your Berean Bible you told, no? Berean Study Bible. Can you read from that one, Second Peter 2 4? Stephen, brother, you're there? Yes, so Berean Reader's Bible, you want that. Yeah. 2 Peter 2. 4. For God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but cast them deep into hell, placing them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment. If he did not spare the ancient world okay. when he brought Thank God you. on it. Is, is, there any foot, is there any footnote mentioned for the word hell? Nothing, nothing. Not. Okay, nothing. thank you. You want any other version? No, thank you. So, uh, it's in some versions is mentioned. Uh, anyway, we'll try to post all those things in the group uh, after the class is over. See, this is spoken only to angels. So we know in the first world where angels sinned, when they came in the flesh, they married the woman, they committed adultery, and where are they now? They are neither put into a place of torment, but they are bound in earth atmosphere. That is, uh, you see, a hell for them. That means uh, they neither can go to heaven nor. Uh, Come to earth. So they are bound in earth atmosphere. We have studied about this one in the third world. Do you remember? The angels were given the privilege to manifest and demanifest in the flesh. So when they came in the flesh, they committed sin. So they are bound in the earth atmosphere. So these are the angels. They were destroyed in the flood. The giants were destroyed. But what about the angels? The angels are demanifested from human beings to spiritual beings. Now where did they go? Did they go to heaven? God never took back to heaven. They are in earth atmosphere. So this is a hell for them. They can neither go to God and come to earth, a place of restriction. Therefore, Ephesians 2, 2, it says, no, you see, who is the God of the uh, power? Who is the prince of the power of the air? Can somebody read Ephesians 2, 2? Emmanuel, brother, can you read Ephesians 2, 2? Ephesians 2, 2. Yeah. Where in the time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Very good, brother. The prince of the power of the air. You see, that now worketh in the children of disobedience. He's a prince from the power of the air. He can neither go to heaven nor come to earth. Therefore, dear brother, you see, God never accepted, uh, you see, the rituals uh, which they did to Baal. Bible says, no, it never came to my heart. When God never thought about the wicked people sacrificing the wicked in fire, it never came to his thought. Do you think God would have made a hell next to heaven to torture all the unbelievers? No. 
No. Bible says God has made a beautiful plan. All the dead in Adam. You see, from the creation of Adam till Jesus' second adventure, they're all sleeping in the grave. All the souls die, they are waiting in the grave. At Jesus' second adventure, they shall be raised back to life and brought back this on the same earth and learn the truth. That is what the Bible says. Not that God has made a place of torment, hell. What does the Bible say? God would destroy the wicked. He has nothing to do by preserving the wicked. Read Psalms 145.20. Uh, Psalms 145.20. Sai Jibudar, can you read Psalms 145.20? Uh, anyway, any anyone, uh, KJV, anyway, anything. Psalms one forty five twenty. The Lord watches over all. One forty five twenty. Ah yes, brother. Yeah. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. See, all the wicked he will destroy. Destroy means destroy, not preserve. What use does it make for God to preserve them without giving you opportunity to repent, to punish them so much? What is this? There is a purpose. No, if you punish something, there is, there is a purpose that they, they may return back. If there is no chance of returning, what is the use of punishing? Read Psalms 37, 9 and 10. Samik Shastar, can you read Psalms 37, 9 and 10? For evil doers shall be cut off. Cut off. Those... Underline. Cut off. Not preserved off. Not tormented off. Cut off. Huh? But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be yea, Thou shalt diligently consider his place and it shall not be. Thou shalt diligently consider his place. He shall not be. He can never be found. He shall be destroyed. Now read verse 20, sister. Verse 20 also, sister. But the wicked shall perish. The enemies of the Lord shall be as the fate of lambs. They shall consume into smoke. And shall they consume away? You see, the wicked shall perish. They shall be consumed or not preserved, dear brethren. Therefore, dear brethren, hell with hell. Hell is not a place of torment. Hell, as per the Bible, hell word is there. As per the Bible, hell is the death condition, the grave, where all the dead go, dear brethren. This is what the Bible says about hell. Okay? If anybody has got any questions, any doubts, Please ask. Anybody, any questions, any doubts? Brother, as you said that uh, hell is just a grave, but not as uh, like a, for a torment or, uh, or as like a punishment. But we have been hearing from years and years that uh, hell is dangerous and it is full of fire. So uh, it makes us like sometimes it's like a confusion. Is it real that we don't have such a hell? Or like whatever we were taught, uh, what is that? That is all like uh, uh, false teaching or like uh, it's not exactly false, but whatever uh, they have been teaching us, what do we understand? Very good question, sir. So why these things crept inside the church? There is a reason. So there's a particular class we will be covering in detail, how this thing slowly crept inside the church. See, the Bible clearly says the soul dies. If soul dies, if there is no soul, if there is no immortal soul concept at all, then what goes to hell? There is nothing that is there to go to hell, no. Then what is the meaning of hell? So how did they create this one? Why did they come into picture all these things and all? We will see very detailed. It's a eight-hour class. Okay, how it came... So, what was the reasons? So, how we developed and today we have this concept here. But this was not there until, you know, uh, the 4th or 5th century or not even until the 15th century. 
this concept of uh, immortal soul or hell was not there at all. It all raised somewhere around, uh, you see, uh, uh, 12th century, all these things came into picture. Why? I will tell you all these things and all. See, uh, even the people of Israel never believed in all these things, the place of torment. That is the reason they, they have the hope of resurrection. You see, if there was a concept of uh, torment of hell, why would they have faith of uh, resurrection? So all these things came after the death of Jesus, after the disciples went all over the world and preached. You see, so who did all these things? Why God allowed it? We will see all those things. But uh, as far now, this is what the Bible clearly teaches us that uh, hell means a death and burial place. Okay? Brother, one question. Uh, Stephen, you spoke please. of the first death and the uh, second death. Yeah. First death of Adams. Yeah. And the second of that of others? The uh, rest? No, no. Okay, I'll make it more clear. See, first death means not Adam's. See, Adam was the one who committed sin in the Garden of Eden. But that death passed upon everybody. So we are all dying in Adam. That is the first death that came through Adam. Okay, brother? Okay, the first it, it, death it, that was uh, imputed, or, imputed to Adam. Mm. Very good, brother. Very good. That's, that is through Adam. Not only Adam, through Adam, the entire race is dying. So, Jesus died and gave a ransom. So, all the people who are dying in Adam will be raised in Christ. So, everybody will have salvation in Christ. So, we are saved from the first death. Correct now? Okay. Thank you. Now, second death means what? After accepting Jesus as a savior, after okay. getting salvation through Jesus uh, from the first Adam's sin and death, if he commits sin willfully, willfully, underline that word, willfully, purposefully, if he commits sin, see, mm -hmm. willingly, then they will go to second death. You see, there are conditions to go to second death. Not everybody can go. You see, and that will be to the lake of fire. Ah, uh, that will be gone forever. That means they won't come back again. Now that one is compared to the lake of fire. Why lake of fire? You now imagine. Uh, if you put something into fire, what will happen? Consumed. It will be consumed. Very good, brother. Whatever you put, brother, you put iron, even stone, you put anything into fire, it will be consumed. That is the power of fire. And the lake of fire means, imagine, it's a molten lava. You put anything into lava, it will consume. Vapor. Vaporized. Yes, brother. Correct. Vaporized. Not to be seen anywhere. That is what the Bible says. Sulfur and brimstone is there in the lake of fire means it is utter destruction. That person will not come in any resurrection. He is gone forever. That is the picture of second death. We have we we will see elaborately about second death. So it's a kind of kind of degrees you're talking about. Yes, gone first forever. and second yes, degrees, yes. higher degree. Yes, first and second. So one who has escaped from the first only can go to second. Death. So we are living the first death, that means you're saying. Yeah, we, we, we are living, correct. We are escaped from the first one, we are living. But how can after Christ, having taken death upon himself, how mm. can we still be living in the first death? Pardon, sin pardon? is taken away, death. Correct. Christ has taken a sin upon himself and death upon himself. Okay. And died for us, our sakes. So okay. how can we still be living in that death? No, no, we are not living in that death. We are escaped from that first death and living okay. in Christ. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay, brother. So this is applicable okay. for us now. In the thousand years, it is applicable for the whole mankind. In the thousand years, all mankind will be rescued from the first death. They will be given the knowledge of truth. They should obey the truth. If they don't obey, if they still want to live in a unholy and a sinful life, then they will go to second death. So it's only after the millennium that you're talking about judgment or is it before the millennium? No, no, no. See, this is got two pictures. First application is for ourselves. Second application okay. is for the whole world. Okay? Okay. So that is applicable for us now because we are in the truth now. We are accepting Christ. Correct now? Mm -hmm. But the whole world, yes. they are not yet accepted no. Christ. Their eyes is not yet opened. So once they accept Christ and their eyes is opened, that will start apply to them. Mm, second death will apply. Yeah. 
now it is applied for us for them it will be in the thousand years oh so regarding judgment we'll see in the next class okay bro thank you thank you thank you okay uh sahiji brother any questions any doubts uh sahiji brother you there any questions any doubts no brother okay Emmanuel, brother, any doubts, any questions? No, brother. Thank you. Okay, I'll be sending the PDF notes. Please go through the notes. It is quite detailed. Any doubts, any questions, you can please ask next week. Okay. God bless. So.